a different person on, on the set tonight. We have Gloria. Say Good hello, evening. Gloria. Good evening. Okay. And instead of Cat Steel tonight, we have Connie Steel. That's right, another Steel. Now, no relation to Cat. Okay, but uh, she is a singer. She's a local, uh, one of the local gals here. Uh, happens to be uh, from the same neighborhood that the. Uh, you're the only out, uh, uh, the only uh, person out of town, uh, actually, because Mr. O'Connor, our engineer, Connie, and Uncle Ronnie are all from Chicago. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> so, do not pay the ransom. We have escaped. Yes, we have. <laughs> but I'm not sure they miss us much. But at <laughs> any rate, today there's been all types of things going on in um, in the, in the uh, hearings, and, and it's it's really something to see because this was supposed to be a hearing that was damning to the president of the United States, and it wasn't. It was damning to the Democrats, as most of us knew it would, because there's nothing really there. This wasn't about what President. Uh, Trump did. It's what they think President Trump did or may have been able to do. The hearings today were full of falseheads, rumor, gossip, charade, lies, sham, and facades. Yep. Now, I think I think you, any, anybody that had seen this, and for those of you that are watching uh, in the Philippines and in Africa and in Europe and we have people there that, that do that. We, we really appreciate your viewership. <clears throat> the tr President of the United States uh, has been doing such a marvelous job, and the political party here that's the opposition, which are called the Democrats in the United States, and uh, <laughs> Donald Trump is a Republican. And what we're looking at here is a party that cannot win the next election because they do not have anybody that could be a legitimate candidate and they're out of ideas. They're trying to turn America into a socialist country, which we refuse to allow them to do that. Isn't that right, gang? That's exactly right. We're going to put up a good fight. Okay, yep. you bet. And uh, even Mr. O'Connor's shaking his head back there. And I don't know whether he's got a fly on his nose or whether he... Yeah, there he goes. And, and so this is something to see is that <laughs> it's just, it, it defies... Uh, jurisprudence. It defies logic. And it defies jurisprudence. I mean, the president can't have anybody in the hearings that support him. Uh, they uh, they can't get their own witnesses. They can't subpoena. The president's the defense people cannot subpoena them. And uh, the uh, all of the questions, for the most part, have to be passed through the chairman. And he determines the quality of the question, whether it should be asked. And in the past, what, one of the things he's done, he's actually told people that are testifying, yes, you may answer the question, or no, you do not have to answer the question. And in a couple of cases, he's coached them in answering the question. And I know in most of the countries that uh, our listeners are watching, and, and even those of you that are in, in the East Coast that are watching this, um, that's not the way the legal system works. So, at any rate, I wanted to go over a number of things uh, that, that happened here today. And we had um, the, uh, the TV show, as I said. And the question is, why would you charge somebody with something that you don't know what you're charging him for? It was a phone call. And the question of the phone call was, what was discussed in the phone call? Well, the president put out a, a uh, what, 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 what did he call that, a transcript of his yes. phone conversation, mm -hmm. which is highly unusual, but he did. There was no mention of what they call quid pro quo. Well, have you noticed, though, that it's now not a quid pro quo? Yes. Now we have gone from quid pro quo to bribery and extortion. Because, And I my theory behind that is because of the video that came out of Biden saying that if you don't fire that prosecutor, then you're not getting money. And because the Democrats are saying, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Biden did nothing wrong. And because they know that that's a quid pro quo, that's why they've gone away from that because they don't have an argument 
And so now they're going with bribery and extortion. That's my thought on it. And, and one of the things you've heard us discuss this before, and um, uh, Mr. O'Connor, if you'd uh, just get ready to, to play card three, I don't do it yet. But, folks, the Democrats sit up late at night, and they decide what they're going to talk about the next day. And they hand it to their, uh, well, I call it the, their companions in arms, and that's the media. The media is supposed to be an independent third rail, and they're not supposed to be on anybody's side. But they are. And we'll talk about this quid pro quo thing. That's what the Democrats are saying. So let me just explain what quid pro quo. If I do this, you do that. And, and you have you, to know that this is being done. And if it's not, if I don't get what I want, you don't get what you want. Right. And so what they're saying is that the president is holding these company, uh, these countries, that was the Ukraine, and he's holding them uh, kind of at hostage. If you don't do what I want you to do, then you're not going to get any money. And what they're claiming is he wanted him to investigate uh, Hunter Biden and former Vice President Biden. So let's see what the Democrats said that today's hearing would actually be about. Mr. O'Connor? Card three, please. That sounds like a quid pro quo directed by the president. Is, in fact, a quid pro quo. To push for a quid pro quo. There was, in fact, a quid pro quo. The very clear quid pro quo. That is a quid pro quo. Okay. What was it? A quid pro quo. No, is it extortion, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's a bribe. <laughs> At any, rate, any rate, this is the type of thing that goes on in the United States. Let me explain the term third rail. If you have a vehicle, that, like a train that's running down the tracks, the third rail is a, is a generally, or it's electric trains, I should say. I shouldn't get into this, but it, it, the third rail is an electrical charge. And so when you're going down the tracks here, you should not have the media that is one or the other it's supposed to be the neutral rail and so uh, that's one of the things mr o'connor what about uh number two could you play that thing this is another one of these issues i think that you'll 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 see kick his ass out there is such a thing called impeachment that tweet is also enough to impeach the president of the united states page 45 call for the impeachment of the president. Donald Trump has done things worthy of impeachment. Impeachment is a, quote, real possibility. Because we're going to go in there, we're going to impeach the ah! We begin impeachment proceedings now. Okay, so, boys and girls, here's what we got. We just played two, two of the voices here. And what are we talking about? Quid pro quo? Mm -hmm. From one day, day one, they've wanted to impeach him. Yeah. And? Impeachment. And, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely crazy. Connie, this is your first time on the show. So uh, okay, what do you buddy. have to say? You, you're you an observer of all of this stuff. And uh, what do you think about what's been going on with all of the nonsense that uh, – I shouldn't taint that with nonsense. So uh, you might be in favor of it. No, no not she's at not all. or no, she wouldn't I'm be a, on the show. I've been to 72 <laughs> countries and probably at least 60 of them were socialist and – there's nothing that I like the way they're trying to derail the American public, get us distracted with this impeachment process, and possibly take us down the path of socialism, which is basically confiscation of all our rights, our first, second, and every other amendment that's ever been written in our Constitution. So I think it's a very dangerous path, and I don't really see that anything substantiates anything as um, – quid pro quo or anything else they're trying to make up or change the verbiage on. Well, the interesting thing on that is that there's a lot of people who see no quid pro quo, and there was, um, I don't know who it was, went out and was asking the general public, what did you think of the telephone call? And they don't see anything wrong with it. The only people who have a problem with it are the very people who do exactly what they're in accusing President Trump of. Because they're the experts. That's right. They're the experts. the experts. And in a bit, we're going to talk about the uh, whistleblower. But we've been told by Mr. Schiff, Schiff that we're not supposed Schiff. to let his name out. And even Facebook said anybody that uses his name will be taken offline. So we're not going to talk about it until the end. So 
<laughs> we might say goodbye just at the end when we cut us off. I'm glad we're uh, not being censored. <laughs> <laughs> or are we? Or are we? Hopefully <laughs> not. <laughs> we don't know. Um, any rate, <clears throat> we had two gentlemen, two very distinguished gentlemen that were the um, uh, came on the, the radio this morning uh, and the TV. And uh, they were both ambassadors. To the, they had very long uh, professional records and they were very, very impressive. The situation that I, I think we've seen is while they're professionals, they're not the one that makes the calls. The Constitution of the United States firmly puts the president in charge of our foreign policy. Well, pre- well, well uh, I was going to say president. Oh, what a faux pas. Um, Joe Biden says that our president shouldn't be talking to foreign leaders. Yes. <laughs> but, but I want you to – Just I, saying. We have on voted. the card, again, we have – a statement here, and this is by uh, uh, Ambassador Taylor, uh-huh. who has a long and be- wonderful record. But you'll hear what he says. He's not saying I'm a witness right. to what's going on. Listen carefully. I'm not a witness, but here's what he's going to talk about. Mr. O'Connor? Which number? One. Oh. Mr. Alden, what, what I can do um, here for you today is tell you what I heard from People. Where is the impeachable offense in that call? Are either of you here today to assert there was an impeachable offense in that call? Shout it out. Anyone? <laughs> Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I didn't hear anything. <laughs> Connie, did you hear anything? No, I didn't hear no. a thing. No, because there is none. He's here today to tell you what he has heard. He heard it from a friend who heard it from a friend, <laughs> no. as the song goes. Uh, so bring Mr. Out the O'Connor, what's, what's that song? That one of our little songs. Here? I'm, I'm looking for it right now. Okay, Mr. O'Connor is is he's getting near this piano, and he's getting ready to play this song, and you'll probably hear him singing in the background. Uh, let me know when you've got that up. But here's the thing: this is not about hearsay. This is about facts. And if you were not in the room and you did not have firsthand information about what the president said, it's all. Inadmissible. You're the singer. Sing it out. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> no one could beat Marvin Gaye. If you, if you haven't been there and you don't have firsthand information, you have heard it through the grapevine. I'm sorry, folks. That's it. And here again, we've already spent $3 million on this nonsense after we've spent what was it, 30 to $40 million on yep. the nonsense with the Russians. Whatever happened to the Russians? They go home and go to bed? Yep. Haven't heard a word from you know, them. I haven't, I haven't heard, heard a word, a word from, from them. From these guys since... Uh, but this is the thing. This is hearsay. And hearsay is not admissible in court. But once again, this... What, what does the president call him? Pencil neck? Uh, yeah, pencil neck shift. <laughs> pencil neck shift. Court of pencil clowns. Neck, shifty shift. And, and, and this guy's saying, well, we're going to allow hearsay in well, this courtroom as though it were fact. Now, you had a comment that, uh, Mr. O'Connor, did you get did, the Quigley comments? He's going on a break here in a second, but. He's, he's on a break, Mr. Quigley's taking oh, a break? Oh, we're going to a break now. Oh, we're taking a break. <laughs> I thought Mr. Quigley. we got to kind of keep him I going. Mr. Here. Quigley was All on right. a break. <laughs> when we come back. We when we listen. come back, we're, we're going to tease you because some parts of the name of the whistleblower will be exposed. We'll see you on the other side. China is the oldest culture in the world, with a written history dating back some 3,500 years. And even 3,500 years ago, China's civilization was old. What do they attribute their longevity to? Healthy eating. Put some longevity in your life and enjoy fine Chinese cuisine at Yao's Restaurant at 2487 South Gilbert Road in Gilbert. For takeout and catering, call 480-899-0308. That's 480-899-0308. Yao's Fine Chinese Cuisine. Trump Fridays is the place to be 6.30 every Friday at various locations throughout the valley. 
Trump Fridays is a fantastic way to meet people who share your political views. Our grassroots organization was started to bring people together for a single common goal, to reelect Donald Trump in 2020. We can't sit back and wait for the Republican Party to do the work for us. We need to fight to save our America. So, if you can't make the meeting every week, know that we're there every Friday and drop in whenever you can. Trump Friday. have a face for radio? I know I do. And when I found how easy it was to get started in an interesting, informative radio program, I jumped at the chance. Since AM radio program is being replaced by podcasting, you can even create your own programming from your home. Hi, I'm Ron Butters, better known as Uncle Ronnie on my Fighting Back radio program. If you have a business, a hobby, or a passion, and you would like to share that with others, then podcasting may be for you. With a strong desire, some talent, and a deep passion, you too could get your radio message on your very own radio programming on Hub Radio Phoenix Network. We have one of the best broadcast engineers in Arizona to help you every step of the way. If you are interested in the enjoyment of podcasting, call me at 602-677-1496 to discuss the effective and affordable way to own your very own radio program. That's 602-677-1496. For the best buffet in town, look no further than the Hometown Buffet. Food is prepared fresh throughout the day with only the highest quality ingredients. The Hometown Buffet offers hot entrees, salad bar, side dishes, even the bakery desserts and hot and cold beverages are included. All for one low price and with five valley-wide locations to serve you. Visit the Hometown Buffet today. They've got so many choices it would take a week to try them all. The Hometown Buffet, Visa Discover and MasterCard accepted. You're listening to Fighting Back. News talk, current events, and political commentary. And now here's your host, Uncle Ronnie. Welcome back. Um, we have, I uh, want to change the news just a little bit here because there was a little story that came across the, on the line and I wanted to, to uh, make a comment on it. This is from Cindy McKean. And sh- this is the wife of our deceased Senator John McKean. And uh, she says that uh, the GOP today, if John McCain was uh, was alive, he would be disgusted with the GOP today. Oh, yeah. And I have a message for Cindy. Sorry he's dead, but his co- his comments at this point aren't significant. Nope. You, would you agree? I think he backstabbed the GOP. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, he has done a lot of damage to, yes. this, to the GOP. Uh, I have another little thing here. We want to stay, stay with at the moment. We're going to. We're still wanting to stay with the um, issue here uh, on uh, on the shift and the uh, reasons why this the president will not be impeached, should not be impeached, and because uh, he did nothing wrong. Well, not only did he not did nothing wrong, but this morning, from what I have heard. Lots of people tuned in, myself included, to see what was going on. Of course, I had to leave to come to the office here, but they said there was just a massive exodus after about the first 20 minutes. The show was so, well, so... Just out of curiosity, did you see Devin Nunes's I did. Uh, opening? It was and brilliant. It was brilliant. And, and he absolutely called them all out. Everything we're supposed to forget, the fact that Adam Schiff, uh, took a phone call from comedians wanting nude pictures of Donald Trump. He, we are supposed to forget that um, uh, Schiff lied in the congressional record about what was said in the phone call and, and a couple of other things. And it's like, yeah, we're not supposed to know all that stuff or we're supposed to forget about it. But we're supposed to bring out the hanging judge as well. Yes. Without any evidence. Right. Makes no sense. By the way, do we have Mr. Quigley yet before we get I have no idea. Do we have Mr. Quigley yet? I've got his coach. I don't have yours yet. Okay. That's okay. Oh, you have something from Mr. Quigley? I don't think so. Oh, no. okay. I have several other quotes. But um, um, you know, I don't want to bring them. Well, we better. Um. 
It's, we have here again this this man Taylor who is a ambassador. I think he's left now. I think he's quit. But uh, that would be Mr. Uh, Mr. O'Connor. That would be uh, number five. All right, Are you ready? And this I think is uh, is is again it's telling, and I think it's uh, Jesse Water perhaps is this making this discussion. I love Jesse Water. <laughs> I wish my daughter met him first. <laughs> I love him number too. Number five, please. Here we go. This is the Democrat star witness, not a witness to anything, not really a star, but he, he testified, Taylor. Taylor met with the Ukraine president the day after this perfect phone call, and the Ukraine president told him, the witness for the Democrats, that he had no complaints about the call, it was a great call, and there were no concerns. Then, Taylor, the Democrat star witness, met three times after that with the Ukraine president, and at no time did the Ukraine president or anybody bring up any linkage between the aid and the investigations. That never happened. Can I also, Taylor testified that Ukraine didn't even know the aid was delayed, so no quid pro quo. And just for a little cherry on top on Taylor, the Democrat star witness said that the Trump policy on Ukraine was much better than the Obama policy. Wow, did you hear that? Yep. That uh, President Trump's plan was much better than Obama's. Wow, isn't that dynamite? Uh, okay, and then we had one more, and then we'll we'll see if you can work with Mr. Quigley. I don't know. That kind of sounds like a movie. Was it Quigley, Quigley Down, Down Under? Under Quigley well, it was a Down. really good movie, as yeah, a matter was, of fact. It was a good movie. Uh, at any rate, let's play uh, number uh, number four, if you don't mind. Of the 435 members of Congress, you are the only member who knows who that individual is, and your staff is the only staff of any member of Congress who's had a chance to talk with that individual. We would like that opportunity. When might that happen in this proceeding today? First, as the gentleman knows, that's a false statement. I do not know the identity of the whistleblower, and I'm determined to make sure that identity is protected. Well, that was information on the whistleblower. Uh, that nobody knows who it nobody is. Nobody knows who he is right. except us. Yeah. <laughs> except, bum, bum, bum. Yeah. <laughs> We're one of the few the whole people world knows. that know his name. And for our class that we had here Monday night, if you look over there, you'll see his name is on the board. Uh -huh. See, And so everybody that was in this room on Monday night knows who the whistleblower well, is. Well, the interesting thing about that is also is, did you hear today that the whistleblower is getting a ton of donations? Oh, yeah, didn't he do a GoFundMe page yeah, or something Yeah, like but that? nobody knows who he is. Well, how can anybody do <laughs> that? <laughs> now, the wow. interesting thing about the whistleblower having a GoFundMe page and got almost a quarter of a million dollars is that another person blew the whistle on the whistleblower. That's ah. true. So that's how they found out that he's doing this. It is against the law yeah. for p public employees that are in the uh, diplomatic circles mm -hmm. to do this. Yeah. So he, he's going to probably they're gonna, end up they're uh, gonna investigate losing it. his job over, over that's this. That's so demeaning. Sure. Well, yeah. It's like begging. Yeah. But what I don't understand is what does he need money for? He's the one who did all this. If he's trying to get it for legal fees, excuse me, you're the one who did it. You're the one. You know, the take one. responsibility, but they don't know how to take responsibility. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do one more here because Mr. O'Connor, I think, wants to eat. So if we have to have him pushing this button, he won't be able to eat his sandwich. Is or it chew, is chew it his mine? Nails. Nope. No. It's it's another one of mine. Okay. Here we go. Okay, here we go. The member of my staff could hear President Trump on the phone asking Ambassador Sondland about the investigations. The president must have been speaking loud enough for your staff member to be able to overhear this? It was. Okay, that was Shifty Shift that added the comment. Now, I don't know how in the world you can have a person testify and then somebody else end your testimony by saying, Oh, the phone was loud enough that other people could hear. <laughs> yeah, that right. Was not, that was not Taylor's, uh, Taylor's comments. So anyway, let's go through this real quick. Why is this whole thing a farce? Well, first of all, um, the, the television. Let, let's just call it impeachment TV. Okay. And that's a new, new, uh, a new program. Now, you, you have a couple hours during the day. Would you like to that's spend the morning case. watching impeachment TV every day for the next month? It'll end my insomnia problem. I think it's going to. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's going to end very soon. Okay. The the reason why is, is Schiff is not watchable. I can't. The man is a total an idiot. 
in uh, if any of you watch Greg Gut Gutfeld, you'll see uh, this guy uh, Shalou play the part of. Have you seen that yet? Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, it's funny. funny. <laughs> it is funny. And uh, anybody Saturday night watch watch Gutfeld? They do this little gig with with uh, Shalou and uh, so forth. Okay. Uh, secondly. Um, If you've watched an hour of this, you're not going to watch it again. <laughs> it is very boring. Uh, the people... Now, folks, I'm going to just tell you what this is. The Democrats say that there are facts here, that this is that we're going to prove facts that the president is guilty of something. Quid pro quo is what, what they were calling it, as we co talked about earlier. Simple fact is the people that are testifying, nobody has firsthand information. No one except the president, and he released the transcript. They're not allowing the transcript to be used. So this is a, this is a, this is a uh, court kangaroo that court. Uh, we just have. Kangaroo. Kangaroo yeah, is the good, a good word. Totally so insane. anyway, it's all conjecture, and uh, there's just too much hype. And if you listen to everybody talk, they just say, well, I feel this. I thought I heard this. And I think uh, Congressman Jordan said, so you told Mr. Smith, who told Mr. Jones, who talked to Mr. Um, uh, what was the one from uh, Mr. Pelican and Mr. Uh, Mr. Steele? Mr. And, Steele, yeah. And, and, and then you Horses. heard it from Mrs. Steele, right? And, uh, that's the way this thing goes. So that, that's nothing there. Uh, okay, so number three is the redundancy of uh, the redundancy of the redundancy. They say the same thing over and over and over. The first time it was said, it's false, and it's still false. Fourth thing. Republicans will either get uh, get stiffed by the Democrats, what they're trying to shut them down, uh, or they'll eat their witnesses alive. Right now, the Republicans are eating the witnesses alive, and I'm real happy to say, for the first, well, maybe the second, third time in the last year, I'm very proud that the Republicans have finally got a little testicular fortitude, and they're going for it, and, and, which they should. Finally, yes. <laughs> Finally here, the, the case is fundamentally flawed from the beginning. Now, you had a comment from Mr. Quigley, and I don't know if we have Mr. Quigley, Mr. O'Connor, Mr. Oh. Quigley there yet? I'm working on it right now. Okay, well, why don't we just say what Mr. Quigley said? No, I got it. Oh, you got it? Okay. Mr. Mr. O'Connor, uh, I've never seen him work this hard. <laughs> we're wearing him out, I think. We are. We are. Well, why don't you uh, tell us about yourself while we're waiting for Mr. Quigley? Well, I have been volunteering for the Republican Party for a long time through many elections, and I'm uh, trying to be social and meet great people, and I feel like the only time I'm not going to be attacked is when I'm with fe fellow Republicans and patriarchs like myself. And fortunately, I got to meet all of you wonderful people, and... I met thousands at the uh, Don Jr.'s uh, book signing oh, at you Costa. Right. Donald Trump Jr. was in town with his new new book. Yes, I got and, uh, two you, copies. And you were at the Costco store, I understand. I sure did. I was there for six and a half hours. Wow. And it was a long time. So uh, and they were being a little bit unfair about the news here because when I read it, it said hundreds of people were there. I think there was a couple thousand, maybe three thousand oh. people. It took me three hours. I'm mean, excuse me, six. Well, a hundred people hours can go through life. there in less than six hours. Right. Yeah. So, uh, and then they said there were as many protesters as there were people like us fans <laughs> and patriots. That's not true either. There were some people that were harassing us in the parking lot, and because we had a Trump shirt on, they were calling us racist and and all this other all these other insults and innuendos not even knowing that I'm half Polish and my family, a lot of them were uh, killed in, uh, by Hitler. By Hitler the, the same Nazis. name they called me, he was the one who actually killed half of my family that stayed in Poland, that didn't make it to Chicago. I don't understand this thing about racism. Everything is racist. Everything. You know, we talked, I think, last week or the week before, we talked about environmental racism. Mm -hmm. now, Whatever what that is. is that? Oh my gosh, another convoluted <laughs> expression, I think. I was just doing statistics, just for fun, maybe. There's 7.7 .7 billion people in the world. And you know the big green deal? Yeah. How, yeah. how is 
three, what, 330 million Americans going to overcome the contamination of 7.7 7 7 billion, billion people? people. And, and the thing about that is it's not us. No, it's not us. I've been to China. I've been to India. I've been to Indonesia. I've been to the biggest guilty um, air, air land polluters in the whole world, their countries. And you just can't even imagine your nose curls up at the smells. Well, there. and that's what I was going to, and in China, I understand, you can't, like, see a foot in front of you. Yeah, like, it's, it's just so bad. Unless there's a nice rainstorm right before you get there, then you might be able to breathe. But, yeah. you know, it's quite contaminated. But we can't fix that, unfortunately. Right. Like, you can't tax every American out of this. You can't tax this at 100% and resolve the pollution and the contamination. In everybody in else's world. country and yeah. not ours. <laughs> And another statistic, you might love this one, 97 out of 100 babies are born into the third world. So how is it with 300 to 500,000 uh, abortions a year, uh, 300 to 500,000, that it's possible that, you know, we're the ones that are called right. for polluting and contaminating the world. It's, it's not us. <laughs> no. We're as not perfect, fact, it's not all, all us. <laughs> matter of fact, the United States is one of the cleanest countries in the world. Oh, yeah. Well, I got solar, and I got rid of it. My Every blade of grass is gone now. I am completely green. There's uh, I'm not wasting water. What do you do for salad? Well, I'll, I'll have that. That's fine. <laughs> and that was probably, you know, we'll use the water over and over again and grow the lettuce. But <laughs> no, I'm doing everything I can to be green. So when people call us contaminators and that we're not for the green deal, uh, I've done my part, 60000 for solar, solar, got rid of my grass. I'm saving about 300 a month between landscaping and, and water. Oh, so. wow. Uh-huh. A lot of people can drink water now since I got rid of my grass. <laughs> How's so, Mr. Quigley doing? I don't yeah. know. Oh, okay. Okay, so, Mr. take right. it away. So here's Mr. Quigley re referencing hearsay at the hearing today. Most primer on hearsay, I think the American public needs to be reminded that countless people have been convicted on hearsay because the courts have routinely allowed and created needed exceptions to hearsay. Hearsay can be much better evidence than direct, as we have learned in painful instances, and it's certainly valid in, in, in this instance. Well, gentlemen, yield because none of those exceptions would apply to this testimony. It's not... Who that is, is, who is this idiot? Uh, uh, hearsay is better than He's facts. from Chicago, right? That huh? figure. That's why we escaped. He's that, still there. Yes, right. Exactly. We escaped. <laughs> and, and, and he said, that is just blatantly false. Now, I will say this, is that hearsay, and, and I've been to court where I was with somebody, and they were talking, and I was saying something that they told me, and... The judge said, well, that's inadmissible because it's hearsay. Okay. And there's few exceptions where there are some state laws that do allow hearsay. But overwhelmingly, hearsay is inadmissible. So what this guy is talking about is beyond my comprehension. And no, facts outweigh hearsay every time. Every time. Now, here's the thing, Gloria. The, the, what happened once again? The whistleblower, Mr. Still teasing. Yeah. We're going to get to that. Mr. E. <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll name. start with the E. <laughs> First name starts with an E. And the problem that we have here with Mr. E is the fact that he's not firsthand. Somebody told Call him, him. Mm -hmm. about what they thought was going on. Right. And wow, is that beautiful music? They thought what was going on. If they. That's hearsay. Right. What really went on, nobody knows. Right. Except for the people on the phone call. And? And the transcript. The transcript. But they don't want to use the transcript. Well, someone says they're going to kill you and you call the police. The police, they're going to say, well, that's just hearsay right. because they only threatened you. They didn't really kill you yet. You're going to have to, Mr. O'Connor's going to tan my hide. We'll see you on the other side. Don't spank me.
Fridays is the place to be 630 every Friday at various locations throughout the Valley. Trump Fridays is a fantastic way to meet people who share your political views. Our grassroots organization was started to bring people together for a single common goal, to reelect Donald Trump in 2020. We can't sit back and wait for the Republican Party to do the work for us. We need to fight to save our America. So, if you can't make the meeting every week, know that we are there every Friday and drop in whenever you can. Trump Fridays. Camelback Toyota, located conveniently on 16th Street in Camelback, off the 51 freeway, easy to get to right here in the city. You work downtown, stop on your way home, take a look at some beautiful new cars, used cars, Derek and John O'Malley Jr., and my mechanics in the back, Abe and Jerob and Tom, my man Jake, Felix, John Wicks is there, Levi, they are trained and trained heavily. They know everything backwards and forwards on any Toyota. Customer satisfaction, numero uno at Camelback Toyota. Sight is a very precious gift. If the quality of your eyesight is becoming a concern, see a world of difference at Family Eye Care Associates. With over a quarter century of experience in the Valley, Family Eye Care Associates offers complete diagnosis and treatment of cataracts, glaucoma, diabetes and dry eyes, and thorough retinal evaluations with dilated exams and retinal imaging. Specialized doctors, highly trained and certified technicians, licensed opticians, pediatric and geriatric care, contact lens fittings, and high-quality lenses and frames at prices you'll like. And as always, all of this comes with friendly, personalized service. We accept most insurances and have two convenient locations in both the East and West Valley. Give Family Eye Care Associates a call now. In Scottsdale, dial 480-419-3900. For the Glendale area, dial 602-843-2900. Family Eye Care Associates is a proud member of Vision Source, a network of premier eye care practices. Come home to the gated community of Crisman Peaks and 5,350 square feet of pure luxury. Floor plans include five bedrooms, five baths, four-car garage, home theater, even guest quarters. Breathtaking views are included at no extra charge. For more information, call 602-505-0004. Custom homes with the quality you expect, the value you demand. Call 602-505-0004 today. You're listening to Fighting Back, news talk, current events, and political commentary. And now here's your host, Uncle Ronnie. Thank you for tuning in, and we appreciate you. And we're here tonight with uh, Connie Steele, no relation to Cat Steele. And we also have Gloria here, and she's uh, going here crazy with, with Mr. Quigley. We finally have some information on what Mr. Quigley said. And I thought we might take a minute and see who Mr. Quigley really is. Okay. Because Mr. Quigley does not sound like a conservative Republican. And he's not. Surprise, I was surprise. I going to say he's not. <laughs> <laughs> he is a Democrat. He is from Chicago. He took the seat of Mr. Rahm Emanuel, who was the chief of staff to President <clears throat> Barack Obama. Enough said there. Uh-huh. So you know where that is coming from. He got his bachelor's degree from Roosevelt University, and I don't think, as liberal as this guy sounds, I don't think it's the Theodore Roosevelt University. It must be Delano Roosevelt University, Uh a Democrat. He got his law degree from Loyola, which is a pretty good law school, but with an attitude like he just said, where, you know, the the hearsay can be more powerful than the facts. Uh Uh, I'd like to see who, who was his instructor and why he passed the passed the, the bar exam with, with knowledge like that. And then he went to the University of Chicago, which is another very liberal uh, university, uh, and studied public policy. He's in favor of abortion rights, gay rights, teaches environmental quality issues, uh, health care, and gun control. Confiscation. And confiscation. Now, I want to talk just for a minute about gun control. I was very disappointed with the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court made a decision that the people, oh, and, and yeah. I don't know if this is a singular issue yes. or not, they but that the people at uh, what Sandy, was that Hook. School? Sandy Hook, uh, mm-hmm. with that horrible tragedy that took place, that the parents can go against 
That is the so gun manufacturers. Wrong. Remington, Remington, right? Remington. Was, yes. You can go right. against the gun manufacturers and sue them for the loss of their. That is their so children. wrong. That's like suing the car manufacturer because there's car accidents. There's it's still the error of the driver. No. Well, it's, it's like at, almost everything. Wow. The person that's, you know, like an airplane crash, well, it's yeah. pilot I, error. You don't go after Boeing. You know? Right. And if somebody's drunk driving you and they have a car accident. You sue the drunk drivers yeah, or their family or their estate, but not the, the right. car manufacturers. The, the, right. It's not because it was a problem with the car. Right. That's crazy. Well, we're, we're going we're gonna to. And, you know, excuse me, that kind of surprises me with the. Now, I don't know how they came to that decision, how many they need to come to that decision, but because it is a more conservative Supreme Court, that's what baffles me. What the me. issue was is that the advertising right, that's was right. They were the blaming thing that. that created the, the issue that maybe it was a safe weapon. Um, but that still is weapon, irrelevant. It's even irrelevant. if a gun is not loaded, you never point it in the direction of right. anybody because never. it's always assumed to be loaded. But always. like I said, it's irrelevant because the gun has nothing to do with it. It is the person who holds the gun. You know, it's, it's ironic that the feminists are so anti-gun. You know what? Being anti-gun is being anti-woman because I certainly wouldn't be able to out-wrestle you if you broke into my house. Big That's strong man comes breaking into my house and my alarm doesn't get him. My dog doesn't get him. The flashlight but doesn't know him. Will. Exactly. Yeah, right. That's the only thing that makes me equal to a criminal, right. breaking in my home. It's the great equalizer. Exactly. Yes. So to take away our guns is going to just invite dictatorship right. in our country exactly. and confiscation. Well, we're going to go to the next section here because we're going to run out of time, I think, if we if we don't. Um, the whistleblower's first name is Eric. So I'll leave it for that for now. So you, they might cut us off only half of, half off if we only give that. But we have uh, sat down the other day, and we were talking about ways that we can do something to assist the president and stop this nonsense when we have issues that this country must face, and we're, 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 we're stressing over impeachment. It, it, it's ridiculous. And that was, how do we go about taking this scourge away from the House of Representatives? Uh, representatives and uh, Connie and I have a uh, little plan. Are you ready to bring out the plan? I think so. I okay, think I, hold I, on. Get your pencils and paper ready and start jotting down what Connie's going to talk about. It's very important. It's that important. You better start writing it down right now. Right. You ready? Okay, good. Well, I'm thinking the best thing is we got to make a lot of noise. Whoever you've elected in your districts, you need to make a big stink, even if they're Republicans, especially if they're Democrats. I think we're, what, 31 Democrats short, 31 votes short, because we have more Democrats. There were 31 Democrats. Right, elected in. That were elected in districts that Donald Trump won. Right. They are all in jeopardy because... These people are liable to say, and I hope they do, yeah, right. that we're fed up with the Democrats and we will not take this nonsense anymore, and you are out of here. Right. So with that. Well, I, my, my idea was just find wherever you live, find three things you don't like about where you're living, like whether it's a bad light that people get in car accidents, whether it's potholes, drugs being dealt in front of schools, whatever it is that you don't like about your city, Please go to your representative and complain that they need to get their damn job done instead of worrying about impeaching Donald Trump. This is just wrong. And you know what I think it is, too? I think a lot of people want to be movie stars that go into politics. They're too old oh, to be movie yeah. stars. They want the press to get on focus on them. So they're taking the stage away from our president, and that's, that's what this is all about. They well, want to be on TV. Shifty okay, well, I, I need you guys to stand by because we're going to get into some real, real Downey Brook information here that we're going to pass out to you because you need to know this. Hey, we'll see you on the other side. Don't go away because we're not going away.
Wild Tiger right here in Phoenix. Oh, big fella. Is reminding everyone to please give blood. By doing so, you may save the life of a child, surgery patient, or an accident victim. So give blood. It's safe, it's simple, and it's needed. That message courtesy of Wild Tiger at 2631 North Central Avenue in Phoenix, where they invite you in to enjoy the finest authentic Thai cuisine like Si Penang, Pad Thai, and Ginger Fish. Stop at or call 602-241-8995 for carryout. Wild Tiger is on the air because they care. Hi, I'm Dr. Bob Marshall, Ph.D., host of Healthline. Join me live and hear the latest breakthrough information for you and your family. This month, Quantum Digest is on special. It's the most purified USP plant enzymes. No matter what you eat, it has the power to support its digestion. Buy two bottles, get the third one free. Call 800-370-3447. Flint's Flowers knows what the kid and you really want. Hey, hold it down. The Flint's Flowers Snack Pack is the perfect gift for anyone. Thanks, this is just what I need. Great. Now how about a kiss? Don't push it. Get a room. The Snack Pack has cookies, chips, pudding, nuts, and lots of other goodies. What's a goodie? Read your script, kid. See the Snack Pack live on the Flynn's Flowers website at flynnsflowers.net. Order a Snack Pack today for that special... Thank you. (laughs) Or send a Snack Pack to someone in the military. That's flynnsflowers.net. Flynn's Flowers, the official florist of Air America Phoenix. The Flint's Flower Snack Pack. It's almost too big to eat. These are great. Got any more? What's that, number nine? Flint'sFlowers.net. Order a snack pack today and charge it. Wanna sucker? <laughs> um, uh, uh, b- bubblegum? That's Flint'sFlowers.net. Can I get a snack pack? I want to live better and do more for the environment. I just want to be healthy, but I don't even know where to start. I just subscribed to an awesome magazine called Green Living with great tips, events, and recipes that help me go green and live healthy. Green Living Magazine will inspire you to make eco-conscious decisions for a healthy life and a healthy planet. Pick up Green Living today at Fry's, Whole Foods, and 500 other locations statewide. Or subscribe at GreenLivingAZ.com. Find us on Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. Live, work, and play green with Green Living Magazine. You're listening to Fighting Back, news talk, current events, and political commentary. And now here's your host, Uncle Ronnie. Politics is a numbers game. That's right, it's a numbers game. And politics has consequences. The results of elections have consequences. We were just talking uh, while we are here that when the food program with the schools for children and the hungry started out, there were only 3% of the students that got free lunches. Now it's almost 100%, and most students now are getting free lunches and free breakfasts. Yep. Um, free is not free, guys. <laughs> Somebody pays for it. We're paying for it. Now, let's look at the numbers here. Here's what's happened. The House of Representatives is the ones that, that uh, – calls cause an impeachment they're the ones that call it send it to the senate the senate is the jury we must stop this thing going on in the house so we can get to some real business now there are 31 democrats in the house that won the election in districts that were carried by president trump and if it's if i'm not mistaken it was the two democrats that one that were in one of those districts that voted with the Republicans against the so, impeachment. So at any rate, of those 31 seats, if we knock off 15 of those 31, Republicans take over the House of Representatives again. 15. It's easy to do, okay? And we're going to tell you the plan. Connie, Connie has worked a great deal on this. So why don't you tell, get your pencils and paper out again. <laughs> this is important. Go ahead. Uh, Okay, well, one of my plans is to all of you to contact your re- representatives in your district and whatever it is you're not happy with, just to make sure that they're not going to slip up on you. Make sure that they're going to vote against this impeachment. That's important. And you could do that many ways, through emails, the computer, postcards, just a little postcard with a stamp on it. You can make phone calls. And th- then when you have a little extra time, which is very, very important, specifically target the 31 
representatives that we're talking about, we just mentioned, that was in um, was um, elected in the districts that Donald Trump had carried in the 2016 election. Now, let me interrupt here. In Arizona, for those of you that are listening in, in Arizona, mm -hmm. it's District 1, it's O'Halloran. We must take O'Halloran out. It's important. And he is vulnerable. Okay, so, and we will have lists available for everybody coming up in a soon-to-be-produced video as well as on this, sh this program and through various outlets that we have uh, in, the, in the Internet. So, in, you are allowed, if I may, may just explain. That's fine. <laughs> you are allowed, no matter where you live, to write to any representative in the country now, why do I say that? Because they don't want to hear from you. They don't represent you. Well, gosh, guys. They do represent you. Yes, they do. That's what I was just going to say. Our They'll yes. tell you they don't. But they but do. But a law that they pass affects you. Yes, yeah. It does. So your job is to find as many people to either pass a law you're in favor of or to, abol or to, to vote against any laws you're in favor of. But there's little tricks to this. But, but in today's house of represent there are no laws because they're also in focused on impeachment Go ahead. so nothing's getting done yeah exactly so, so it is very very important that you do spend the time because whatever you aren't willing to do now you're going to pay later and it's much easier to prevent this impeachment now than it is to try to remedy everything afterwards so spend some time instead of being out in bars drinking whatever it is that you like to do watch a movie spend a couple hours send out some emails send as many as you can mm -hmm. but especially target the 31 representatives that were democrats that were in districts held by donald trump that's so so important so please spend the time we'll try to make it easy for you to get that information with postcards with emails phone calls and call as much as you want pester them because when they want to raise our taxes they do it trust me they're ready to take our homes they're ready to do everything they can to take from us so make sure that we get something out of them and and just halt this impeachment this is ridiculous they need to get back to their jobs they, so how do we get mr let's take mr o'halloran for instance what okay. do we do well what can we do well, the first things we can do is start calling his office. He's got four offices. He's got one in Flagstaff, one in Casa Grande, one in, I think it's Phoenix or it's a Scottsdale. And then uh, the other one is in Tucson. So it's very, very important. You can make four phone calls to four different offices. They're going to want to know your, air, your zip code, so give it to them. You don't have to necessarily give them your full mm -hmm. name. Try to give them as but little information. But what if information. they say, like, I live in a different zip code that's not in there? Then what do we do? When they oh. say, "What's your zip code? How do we handle that?" I would just tell them that without give them a fake, give them a zip code in that in that district. district. Just give them the, some Tucson. If you're going to call the Tucson office to pester him, which I advocate for, then call that number. Give that uh, that um, area the zip code. Excuse me, of that area, and don't give the last well, what, four. What, four here's, numbers here's, here's, what, here's here's how they should handle that. They should go to the website for uh, the congressman. Yeah, right. And the congressman has will show the offices. And then they'll show the zip code of the office. When they ask what zip code you live in, give them that zip code. That's even if you call somebody in Ohio, mm -hmm. do the same thing. Look at the number, and they'll say, what's the, and then you give them that zip code. That's and then the best they'll register idea. your vote. Right. And that's, I think that's the best way to do it because that's where they're going to, you're going to hit them like in the wallet or the most vulnerable spot will be in their district. So make sure we hit them there and make sure we do it as often as we can and get your friends to do it. Mm -hmm. Have a pizza party. Get everyone to do this. It's very, very and important. And like with O'Han or Holleran, rather, Holleran. he has a Washington, D.C. office and then he's got the three satellite offices. You can send him a postcard, which is approximately what? Uh, what, less than 50 cents, I and think. And you mail one to each of his four offices. Now, give us some ideas of some messaging. That some more, oh, I, well, I would, I would complain. Well, you might want to start off with a compliment. Sometimes that works. So if there's one thing you can find they've done right, maybe you can elucidate that to them. But then, because you want them to get the message, so then it'll be passed on to them. Then I'd go on to say, hey, this is ridiculous. We have to stop this impeachment process, or we're not going to support you the next time. We will not volunteer for you. We will not support you financially in your next campaign, and we're definitely not going to vote for you. You need to get your job done, and then start um, talk about like three to five things about your city that you don't like whether it's too many potholes whether it's some bad lights or whether it's crime 
drugs, whatever it is that you don't like about where you live or that district, I'd find some complaining to do because they need to do their job. Otherwise, why are they working? They work for us. We don't work for them, but we pay for them. Yeah. And yeah. the messaging can be very easy. You've got yourself a postcard. You all know what they look like, a three-by-five uh, sheet of paper with a stamp. Or you can buy stamps, post stamps. I think we can Stick them it. on there. <laughs> and here we, we were just playing around with some some oh, messages. And we put, stop playing around with impeachment and get to work. Mm -hmm. Do your job. Yep. Get off your ass. Oops, my life. Stop <laughs> being a jerk. Yes. Secure the border. You are wasting our tax dollars on this nonsense, this charade. This uh, this is insane. That's exactly what it is. And it's I like charade. this one. It's using a bad word, but it says impeachment. Hell no. <laughs> and and I suppose that you supported the uh, Russian collusion. Really? Well, that was like a, a no hamburger. Or what do they call it again? A nothing no, burger. A nothing, nothing burger. burger. Okay, so everyone went hungry on that dumb thought, right? Right. So th these are the important things now. You can call all four of his offices. You can also phone all four of his offices. And I've already done that. And they, they wanted, well, what's your name? Well, my name is Ron. Your last name? Uncle. Uncle Ronnie. And <laughs> I just tell them, you know, you don't know my last name. It's just Ron. So you can just call me Ron, and I'm at uh, 85211 is my zip. Okay. Thank you very much for taking my complaint. Oh, by the way, make sure that the congressman sees this. Mm -hmm. It's important. Or, or pick a last name. If you, if you want to give him a last name, give, give him one like Johnson or, or like Steele. Yeah. There's a million <laughs> of us out here. You don't even have to sign, sign the, the postcards. No. Now, what does this do? If you were a man or a woman that is in a district that Donald Trump won and the Democrat Party is pushing you into impeachment vote, you're going to have to look at, well, where's my future? Maybe, just maybe, I shouldn't do this because these guys are going to throw me out of office if I try and throw the president out of office. And it will work, folks, because these people are very, very sensitive to that. Now, is it easy? Nothing's really easy. But if you can't write a postcard, if you can't buy f four postcards and perhaps make two or three or four calls, I mean, Get with, get with it. I mean, you're not serious about trying to save this country if you can't do that. I'm sorry to say that. I know too many Republicans that will sit on their butts and complain, and they won't do anything. It's time for action. Well, that's a segue for one thing that I have to say is here in Arizona, we need people to read the bills. And I had put something on Facebook but we need some. We need people, and I've signed up to help do this to read the bills because Arizona is going in the wrong direction. And as long as we allow these laws that are being passed to continue to go the way we they shouldn't be going, then we're gonna we're gonna be a blue state. You need an interpreter and, for yeah, some of these bills, and, and that's fine. But but still, we need people to read the bills, and there isn't a a, a method to reading it. And so if you're interested, which I hope people are, leave us a message on Hub Radio and, and, and we'll get back to you or message us on Hub Radio Phoenix because we need people to do this and we need Republicans to be active in this. And Republicans have a tendency what, not what to we, what be. What we do, we've got a committee together that will take these bills based on some of the things that you would review on these bills give them to the committee and they would give them a thumbs up or a thumbs down as to yes. whether the legislature should pass it or not it's really important that's what the constitutional republic does so do your part it's not a great deal and i'd like to end the show with saying blessed is the nation whose god is the lord and we'll see you all again next week connie thank you for being here mr o'connor very very nice job with mr quigley we just uh, you know him. i mean they, you know we got him going and uh, we're gonna. We, we really miss our, our sweetheart, uh, Cat. Cat. Mm -hmm. uh, she's not here tonight, but she'll be back next week. But we kept the thing in, in with the family name of Steel. Well, my yeah. daughter's nickname is Cat. Uh, how Katrina, about that? So yeah, there's Cat actually, Steel. A Cat Steel. <laughs> so she's on assignment uh, this week, and uh, uh, it's. Uh, 
I guess we're out. We're going to go. Just be visible. Okay.